to talk about that. All right. So today we're talking about making change. We're talking about the real framework uh, and we'll get into what real actually means um, later on. Some of the, the dudes in here that are part of the connect May mastermind know about that, but uh, um, I'm Stu and this is my uh, less than average uh, business partner, David Gutierrez. Um, and uh, we're going to get right into it. If I can figure out how to change the screen. All right, here we go. I live, uh, I live giving Tuesday every day because I hang out with this guy. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> if uh, anybody else wants generosity, Stu needs friends. It's a heavy load to carry. Stu, please continue. Um. All right. So obviously we're getting kind of to the end of the year and there's, you know, a lot of talk coming up to the beginning of the year about uh, goals and making changes and everybody seems that, uh, you know, January is the, the fresh start and everyone gets excited about that. Um, and obviously there's, there's tons of goal setting that happens uh, myself included. I, I set goals in January, my wife and I sit down and do like a, a goals kind of like mid half day retreat. Uh, we go through a bunch of stuff and talk about what we want to kind of work on next year. Um, but the interesting fact is there are a lot of people that don't that don't set goals at all. Um, And it's, it's interesting uh, why or why not, but I'm just curious, like from you guys, raise your hands. If, if you set goals for 2023 for this, for this last year, raise the hands. I see one and I don't see everybody at the same time too. Um, For the people that I do see, I, I see two hands raised three. Okay. Goody, did you did you make goals last year? I didn't. Nope. I'm taking the Lyle the Lyle head approach to life. So that's interesting. Why why did you not set goals last year? Well, and, that, and that's a bit deceptive, right? It, it's it's not that I didn't go into the into the uh, into the year with goals, but uh, you know a lot of conversations. There's another guy in the mastermind. Those of you who are who are active on LinkedIn probably have seen Lyle head. Amazing individual. Uh, we had a lot of conversations within within the mastermind, and he's he's a big anti uh, writing down setting goals guy. But he's not. If you know anything about him, he is not uh, a low achieving individual. Right, super high achiever. Uh, runs businesses, does coaching, has a lot of different things. But you know, I've found that uh, oftentimes when I set goals, either one they're too small, or two, uh, they're not really um i don't put as much reflection and and quite frankly the real framework into that goal setting process and so for me personally it was very much a there was a very uh personal and and, and a very um high level of intentionality to apply to different areas of my life and that has been absolutely transforming for me this year but it was it was almost it was almost more in the framework of like the one the one thing right or you yeah. know that word like intentionality and applying that across everything that we do has been uh, has been pretty radical for me. Thank you, man. Um, all right. So for those that did raise their hand who did set goals, I'm curious, and and I want you guys to come off mute and actually talk. We like to. This is going to be a discussion, so um, you know, be ready to to engage. Um, for those that did set goals for 2023, how many or uh, you know, was there anybody that actually took that goal? And made like a no kidding, you know, plan of attack, like monthly, weekly, daily, you know, habit planning, you know, set in place kind of type type of of plan to attack these goals. Was there anybody that did that? Ben, you came off mute. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's funny that what Dave says it's like setting the goal. I learned this year that was I got almost too granular because of the way that life changes, right? Like. Things change, your plan changes, what you think is going to be happen for the year and what actually comes up. So yeah, I, I use um, this here. I use the full focus planner. I don't know if you guys like, but this is something that really worked well for me. It okay. basically was like a, a monthly breakdown, then the, like a weekly review and setting your week and then like daily. And I, I did, like I had this whole plan. It's like, I'm going to do all these things and there's all these metrics and blah, blah, blah. You know, like it, it's, it, it became pretty clear that I needed to pivot a little bit more. So like, did I set them and did I try to do that? Yes. Like, but I, I broke it to like, I wiped almost everything clean about four months in and then picked like some three or four big rocks and then like a couple other things underneath that, that I was like, going to be really intentional about. 
and then let the life flow from there as well. Nice. Like, what was that? Uh, what was that um, journal again? Oh, full focus planner. Full focus planner. Right. Full focus. Yeah. It's okay. so like in the front, it actually has like a like a breakdown. So this is my new one I'm setting up for the year, but like it gives you like a breakdown of your goals, and then each individual goal it makes you list in detail, like why you want it, what it comes from and things like that. So it's cool. Cause it only, it lets you only set, I think 10 total goals. And then when you're That's like, awesome. what order you're going to achieve them. So it makes it pretty, like for me, it's just one of those things. Like it's way easier just to like, boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah. I love it. And no joke. Real talk was uh biceps part of your goals this year. Cause yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite make bro. it though. I didn't. It was... mm, I don't know, man. I've seen those things in person. <laughs> It's, it's real it's real no but i mean true and all jokes aside health is like as we get older like health has become like what does health mean right like mm-hmm. it's a number of workouts is it like so it's gone so much from like i'm working out x number of days like how am i becoming healthy about my life yeah i did i love it alex uh racy can talk to you about uh getting healthy he's he's completely changed my life uh with, with uh, talking to him about that um who else? Anybody else uh, on here? Like kind of another form of attack that, that Ben took? Yes. Um, I would actually agree with Ben on being able to be more focused on certain milestones that you want to hit instead of having a lot of goals. Because I noticed in 2022, I did exactly what Ben did. I had a lot of things and I got very scatterbrained and realizing I wasn't able to accomplish a lot of stuff. But then in 2023, I took the approach of just finding one to two things and focusing all my attention on that, and it became extremely helpful. And one of the key things that I learned from a few podcasts is with my goals, once I have those goals, kind of just working backwards, because one of them was to buy an, a, a third property before getting out of the military in 2023. So i took that goal and then just kind of worked backwards on what do I need to do to get there? How can I make that life achievable? And I broke that down from a year to half a year to a quarter to a month to a week and daily basis of what steps need to occur. And that became extremely helpful. Love it, man. Yeah. Are you guys able to see my video, by the way? Sorry. Uh, hopefully you can. It's kind of a, just a white, white screen there. Oh, it is. Okay. Let me see if I can, maybe my camera's not based. What about now? Oh yeah! There oh you go. yeah! Better. There it is. Yeah. Awesome. Nice man. Goody, over to you. Yeah. So, you know, there's a. I think there's a significant problem that 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 happens in goal making, uh, very generally. Uh, one, very few people actually set and create goals, and and then out of that set of people, even fewer accomplish them. And the statistics that we've kind of seen through a number of studies, the one that we've landed on is it shows that about 92% of people fail at achieving New Year's resolutions. And and I just, again, just a a quick conversation. I'm curious what, you know, you guys have mentioned that you set goals, use different uh, paradigms to do that, different frameworks. Why do you think it's such an issue to achieve goals? Like why would 92% of people fail at achieving their New Year's resolutions? And then if you don't mind also answering, like, do, do you even think it's important to set goals? At, at, a, at a failure rate of 92%, right? So uh, why, you know, what are some of the reasons? And, and the reason that, that we're asking this question is is to not only in this group to kind of see the commonalities of, of the struggles that we have and, and realize, hey, dude, you're like, you're not alone. 92%, that's a pretty high percentage of people that, that don't do it. We're not, we're clearly not alone in that. But but what are some of the, the, the keys and the tactics and things that we can look out for as we do move forward, if this is something that is important to achieve higher success rates? So anyway, anybody pop off. Hey, I'll jump in here. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Right on. Um, Scott Adams says goals are for losers. Systems or plans are for winners. And I've had a lot of experience in both of those domains. I think, um, and I've, I've written a few times about New Year's resolutions and how most people have given them up by February 1. The... Um, the problem is, you know, in my world, a lot of people want to set a weight goal. I want to lose 50 pounds. So like for the next four years, in some cases, they're stepping on the scale for over a thousand days and they're still a loser because they haven't lost 50 pounds. 
So instead of saying, Hey, I want to lose 50 pounds. I like to think, you know, in the business world of, of lead indicators and, and tracking those instead of that end state goal. And then occasionally you do check in or review where you're at towards that goal, whether it's a DEXA scan or a blood test or whatever, see if you're moving in the right direction. Um, but um, to, to jump back to the last question, I had a revenue goal for 2023. And because I was doing 7X, I was like, it's it's just going to happen. It was like, you know, if if I do this, the revenue will come and I failed miserably. So um, so I'm going to do um, like from a business standpoint, my plan is to utilize some of the same systems I coach against personal performance in my business for 2024. That's I it. love that, dude. I love the, oh, wait, let me stand up real quick. This is for you, Alex. I, I didn't uh, want to make sure that it's not lost. And does it say 20? Does that say 2024 yeah. on the back? Hey, no, that's a goal for 2023 still. Beat Army every year. Every year. It doesn't matter. You don't tie, you don't tie, you don't tie a goal to that, or you don't tie a date to that. That's just every every year. Um, but hey, you know, I think it's a I love how you say you emphasize the systems. And and I think we're gonna get into this a, a little bit as well. But the goal process, what I hate about it is that oftentimes it's there's not a lot of rigor that's truly applied applied to get to a deeper level of of why, right? Like we sit in the hows a lot and and we sit in in the maybe even the what's, but we don't sit in, we don't get into the whys. We don't we don't uh, truly spend time to be introspective on understanding what it is that we want to do, why we accomplish it, what's what's it important, why is it something that'll add to my life, detract from my life? A lot of times, and, and Stu um, is one of these guys, he's a checklist guy, right? So like the idea of making a checklist in and of itself has a, a beauty to him that I never understand and, and nor do I apply, but but that's a very real thing. Our other business partner is very similar. Steven is is a checklist and, and there's, a, there's, there's a lot of uh, benefit to that. And there's a lot of, of really goodness in that process. But a lot of times, most of us just kind of stop there. And, and I love what you said, Alex, that we're losers because that has a very real, that's, you know, one of the things that, I, that when I, we, we talk in the group or I coach individuals one-on-one -on -one is, is the idea of most of us set so many things, like even in a daily schedule, a, such a, a long to-do list that every night when we go to bed, we subconsciously were a loser. We did not accomplish. We lost the day. And there's, it's very hard to come back and turn around and say, okay, what am I truly grateful for? Like the, the level of effort required to get to that place is so high and so significant that oftentimes our goals, our to-do lists, the things that we're doing are actually leading us further away from where we want to be. And, and a lot of that's at the subconscious level. So I love that you brought that up, Alex. Thank you. By the way, I'll, uh, I'll make a little box for, so I can check it even after... I've accomplished it just so I can check it. That's that's my system. That's what works for me. And just with a raise of hands, this is kind of an impromptu question. How many of you think Stu's a loser for that? I think that's a... <laughs> no hands. Wait, wow. wait until I get my next DEXA scan and show what, what I've accomplished. That's because we all do it. Everybody all... who's off camera is raising their hand right Two. now. I guarantee you. <laughs> uh, all right. So speaking of speaking of why. Uh, David went into it a little bit, but um, so one of the things that we really try to hit on from the very beginning of the Kinetic Man Mastermind is is setting the foundation. And I think a lot of people miss these steps of setting the foundation. Um, but that's that's where we start. Like you have to figure out um, one your identity, like who you are as a person, because I think a lot of us uh, just get you know, blasted with expectations and obligations and what your parents told you and, you know, what the world tells you. Um, and we have these ideas and potentially lies about who we are as individuals. Um, and so I think we have to kind of like reset, right? Like step back and figure out who we are as individuals. So figure out who we are as, as humans, as, as men. Um, and that's the first step is figuring out our identity figuring out your core values, like what truly matters to you. I think a lot of us in the business world, we have, we have core values for our businesses um, and they're plastered all over our website, but we don't have core values for ourselves or for our family. We don't have those plastered anywhere and we don't live by them. 
Um, and, you know, so we just like flounder through life with like what we think our identity is and it might not even be the case. Um, and then, you know, talking about David was hitting on the why, like figuring out our purpose, figuring out, and we have to figure out who we are first. We have to figure out our core values and our identity and where we are, who we are, and then figuring out what we were called to do in this world. Um, and then from that, we create habits. We create the stuff that sticks, the system that Alex, you know, talked on, like what is going to stick for long term. Um, but all of this is is hard. It's like super hard, and it takes a lot of uh, self reflection. Uh, it takes a lot of internal work. You know, like sitting uh, alone in silence and journaling and thinking, and reflecting, and looking back in your past. Um, and some of it can be pretty painful too. Um, we we do a lot of you know personality uh, tests you know the uh, the uh, strengths finders and the uh, enneagram and the myers briggs like david and i've done all of them and they're all uh, uniquely different but they're all really great um, because it really gives you some insight on on who you are and so that's where we start inside the mastermind i know a lot of these guys that are on here have have done that and i think it's been pretty helpful for them um, so we start first there with the foundation. Um, and then, you know, it's a journey along the way. It's like, you're not going to get it overnight. And the more you do it, the more, you know, reps you do, you're going to find stuff uh, about yourself uh, along that journey. Do you got anything on that? Well, yeah. And, and everything you just described is a very, we laid it out in our, in our curriculum that created, but that's like a three month process, right? That that's literally, we spent three months on going through these things. And, and for Stu and I, at least, and a lot of guys in the group, this is an iterative process that has taken, you know, continues to be something that we do years later. And, and you never get to that point. If you ever get to that point where you're like, man, I made it. I know myself, like I got it. Then you you need a different group, right? You need to go into a different circle to help yourself grow, expand, because it, it's, it's something that um, it is the beauty of it is it never ends. I'm reading a book right now, just as a resource. Uh, love this book. We have this guy actually, he's coming on next week. Uh, I don't know when the, when the podcast will drop, but uh, Jordan Grummet wrote a book called taking stock. A phenomenal book. I'm in like chapter three right now. And, and it is, one of the things he says that really sticks out. So he was a hospice doc and yep, the, Stu's got it right there. He was a hospice doc and and he's basically giving lessons uh, kind of from a financial perspective, but also just life lessons on, on the, on the things that he learned from people who are going through hospice. Right. And one of the things that, that he highlights that's so fascinating to me is he said the clarity that most people get. So that a diagnosis, a terminal diagnosis is, is typically the worst day of your life. But he said in his experience, what he's seen is after the shock of the diagnosis hits, it also is one of the biggest blessings that these folks have because it enables them to get to a place of seeking absolute clarity and, and seeing what's truly important. And his point obviously is, why do we have to wait for a terminal diagnosis to, to get there? We can do this well ahead of that. And there's exercises, very specific things that he lays out. There's very specific things that we lay out that can get you to a place that the day by day journey becomes a priority and it becomes really the essence of, of, of moving forward instead of waiting for that diagnosis. And, and so I just thought it was fascinating. He said it in, in plain language that, Hey, th this is, this could be a huge blessing for them, right? That, that they get this diagnosis because now it, it, it removes the ambiguity and the mystery of life and death. And, and it puts you in a place where you're like, okay, today counts. Today matters. What am I going to do? What's most important? Where does my time go? So I'd highly recommend that book uh, for any of those, uh, for any of you guys who haven't heard of it. It's called Taking Stock, Jordan Grummet. Go ahead and, go ahead and grab it. All right, Stu, next. Uh, so we're military guys, right? Stu and I are military guys, our other partner, military guy, a couple of military guys on here. We love uh, uh, acronyms. Uh, acronyms is, uh, is a part of our life. It's something that we uh, live, breathe, and eat. And so we came up with an acronym that really is the, it's, it's the, the, the framework of what we do in the, in the mastermind. So four letters, there's four weeks in a month, real, it's the real framework. And, and what real means is, uh, R-E-A-L is reflect, execute, account, and live. And, and this is, this is the, this is the, uh, our focus of this webinar is, is just to expose you to this because, you know, we, we run the kinetic man mastermind, right? It's not the, it's not, it's TKM. It's not PKM. It's not the potential man mastermind. And I think where a lot of us go wrong is we live in a world of potential. If you take the step 
to to dive deep and and the the R being reflect. If you take the time to dig deep, which you know is something that we we absolutely love doing, then you're like in the top tier of people that even give yourself time to even think about these things, right? And and so what we do, we ask ourselves hard questions, we reflect on them. Again, the reflection week is is we reflect on them. And and that exercise in and of itself is something that will will set you apart just because we're so busy, we don't give ourselves any capacity even to think about these things that are important to us. And and I think the second part of that is you also gain an outside perspective, right? We do this in a group of men, high performing dudes, everybody respects each other, but we challenge each other. And and if you're not doing that, if you're not running these ideas, someone to challenge your thoughts, someone to challenge your, just the, 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 the way that you've grown up and the biases that you have, if you don't have dudes in your group, in your circle that are challenging you and they're giving their perspective, then, then I honestly don't think we can really get to what's truly important in our, in our lives. But that's what we do in, in reflect week, right? We, we sit down, we get in a group, we reflect, we challenge each other, you get different perspectives and we we force ourselves to take the time to contemplate these uh, uh, to contemplate what's truly important priority to us. The next step is the is the E. It's execute. This is like this is what we are all about. You take action. What are you going to do about it? So you've sat down, you've kumbaya, you've you've come up with these things, and oh, this is so important and this is so lovely, and I love these dudes, and we had a great conversation. It's and it's awesome. A lot of people stop there. But we, we want to take it a step further. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to execute? And that's what the E is all about. We take action on creating new habits that align with our purpose. And, and it doesn't even have to be a habit in the second week, right? It's just taking action on something that enables you to move the ball forward and, and actually take action to meaningful action to do something uh, to, to get after your purpose. And then the A is account. This week is is one of our favorite weeks. Is It's where you get back, you come back together and and you have to say what you did, right? You have to say what you did. And if you didn't do anything, you got to say that you didn't do anything. And that's okay. It's okay to do that. But when you're surrounded by a bunch of dudes who are doing stuff and you're like, ah, I didn't do anything again, man, it starts to get awkward, right? And and we've had guys leave the group. <laughs> Quite frankly, we've had guys leave the group because they weren't doing the things. And you could see, you could see the discomfort. You could see the, um, it, it just, it, it comes across as, as are my priorities really my priorities, but I'm not going to do anything about them, right? And just something, I, I looked this up and there's there's stats out there. Uh, I really like these ones. There, there, there's other ones that that are are very similar, but um, it's it's the percentages of of success or or taking action what you're doing, right? So if you have a good idea or a goal, you're ten percent likely to complete that goal. So if you have an idea, you have a goal, maybe write it down. A consciously deciding that you will do it, there's twenty five percent chance of success that you're going to do it. Deciding when you're going to do it that bumps to 40%. So basically put it on your calendar. I'm going to do this every morning at this time. It's on my calendar. There's a 40% chance of success. Planning how to do it, right? So if you were to take the gym analogy, you know, if, if you if you put it on a calendar, I'm going to do it this time every morning. And then you actually plan, you put your gym bag out, you put your shoes in it, you're ready to go. 50%, 50% chance of success if you do that. If you commit to someone else that you will do it, hey, Stu, I'm working out at five o'clock every morning. I got my gym bag, my, my gym bag packed. I'm ready to go. 65%. All right. So that's pretty good. 65%. If you have a specific accountability appointment with someone you've committed to, 95%. If you know you're going to be in a group consistently or be with a person consistently and meet them face to face and either account to them or do that activity with them, 95% success rate. And that's not David, that's not Stu, that's not, you know, it, that's not Alex, that's not Jamel. That, that, that is stats that are coming from uh, serious studies on, on habits and, and serious studies on commitment. And so just, just take stock of that, right? Are you, how committed are you? Are you a 10% committed to your goals or to the things that you're saying are important to you? Or are you a 95% committed? And there is a, there is a framework to do that. And then finally, the L for us is, is live. That's, that's the live it part. So you, you've gone through, you've thought about something which sets you apart from most. You've taken action. You've, you've decided to execute on this thing. You've accounted for it. You have accountability group. And, and now this is something that's going to make your calendar. And it's, it's something that you're actually going to do that's required work to make a change, right? You're going to live it. And, and people, it's not just for you. So if, if part of this thing is being a better dad, who truly benefits from that, right? If part of this is, I want to be a better friend. Who, who's truly benefiting from that? Very selfishly, you are going to benefit 100%. You got more friends, you have deeper relationships, you're going to benefit. 
but you're now also sharing the essence of who you are with those folks, right? Your kids are going to benefit potentially generationally because you've made a decision to be present. And for those of us whose dads weren't present, is that really impactful? I don't know. That's for you to decide. I'm going to be a better husband. No, these are serious questions to consider. Excuse me, serious questions to consider. And, and the impacts, while simple, it, it just some of them are just a, a little bit of time, are absolutely profound in what they look like, not only in your life, but in the life of those that you're impacting. And let me just give a say. yeah, let me just give a practical example of something that that happened with me uh while going through this process. Um I've I've been married for 15 years now with my bride. And if any of you know, like at some point along that journey, like it can get stale, right? Like y- you could just become like roommate status, right? You're like, you're helping and try to raise the kids. You got your jobs and you barely see each other. You, you talk every now and then it's typically about the kids or whatever else is going on. And so one of the co- months that we talk about is intimacy. And if you really dive into what intimacy means, like defining and discussing, which we do in the reflect week, it's, it's really like getting to know that person. Like, being a friend. And, you know, most people say that their wife is their best friend, but like, do you really know that person? And so like diving into that, what, what do we need from each other, from our spouses? Um, and how do we execute on that? Um, we also do what, you know, they call it the love languages. So we take this quiz, we we look at like what our love languages are, what our spouse's love languages are. And so from that, I figured out like, Hey, I don't ever talk to my wife during the day. I leave the house drop the kids off. I go to work. I don't talk to her again until I come home. And like, um, and we talked about, I was like, Hey, what if I just like did a check-in with you on a regular basis? You know, once, once a day, you know, set up just a quick text or something like that. She's like, yeah, I'd love that. And so started executing. She's my accountability partner on that. Cause she knows it's going to come. And then I put it on the calendar. Like it's literally on the calendar on my day. It says check-in. Um, and so I just do a quick check-in either see their phone call, if I can jump on a phone call or if it's just a text, maybe it's just a, Hey, I love you. Um, but Hey, how's your day going? And it's just something super simple and small that has drastically changed our relationship for the better, um, and built, you know, more intimacy in our lives, uh, for, for, you know, the love of my life. So, uh, just, you know, a real example there of something that, that I did personally. Um, okay. So. Uh, you know, we talked about the live, we talked about the calendar. Um, we, we heard this, uh, one of our early guests on our podcast said something along the lines of, uh, you can ever, you can always see what's important to you by looking at someone's checkbook or their calendar. And so we've actually, you know, we've really lived that we've kind of stolen that, that quote. Um, and it's true. If you look at somebody's checkbook and if you look at somebody's calendar, um, that's, what's important to them. If you say your family is important, but there's nothing on your calendar about your family, is it really that important? Uh, if you look at what your expenses go towards and you say your family is important, is it really that important? Maybe not. Um, it's worth looking at. Um, that Atomic Habits book, uh, we like James Clear a lot. There's a lot of great stuff from him. Um, and I think uh, there's also a quote from him, Alex, that talks about, you know, goals are dumb, systems are are, are, are the way to go. Um, but I read recently a a blog of his that talks about, I think there's like this myth out there that it takes 21 days to build a new habit. Um, it's, it's actually really false. Um, there's a lot of science behind it. And I think they said that it came from this guy, Maxwell Martz in like 1960, who wrote a book, um, called psycho cybernetics. Um, and he said it took a minimum of 21 days, but then like Tony Robbins and all the gurus out there, like stuck up, like stuck on that. Like, Nope, takes 21 days, takes 21 days to build a new habit. It's pretty false. And and it actually takes quite a bit longer to build a new habit. So you have to set these systems in place, um, to get you there, to create that new habit until it gets to, uh, be automatic. Um, said anywhere from two to eight months, just depending on the person, depending on, uh, the behavior, uh, you know, how well you do at, at, you know, following, following rules and, are you self-disciplined? All that kind of stuff comes into play, your circumstances of how fast it takes to get to a, a true habit where it's just six automatically. Um, so like David said, I'm a checklist guy. I make checklists for everything. Uh, there is this, this habit tracker app. Um, and this is just a screenshot of, of my own uh, that I did last year. And so I just, I just tracked it. I just started tracking everything that I do on a regular basis. 
And to the accountability piece, I shared it with a bunch of dudes and, uh, and they, they jumped on it too. So that for me worked because it was something that I could check off every single day. I can see where I, where I failed, where I was, uh, you know, consistent, um, and it worked for me. Um, so goody, you know, what, what, uh, worked for you? And I'm curious what other guys, uh, use to, you know, if they've seen success. Yeah. I, you know, one thing too, a, a slightly different angle, uh, a lot of times we put things into our calendar before really diving deep into it. And, and what I would encourage folks to do too, is take a look at your bank account, take a look at your calendar and, and just do an assessment, right? There, there's many tools that you can track your daily activities and, and take an assessment, uh, a calendar assessment of, of what you truly do throughout the day and, and track everything. How much time are you on, on YouTube, TikTok, you know, Facebook, whatever those things, if you're spending time on those things, like t- take no kidding an account. And what's fascinating about that, and you have to be open-minded to be honest, what's fascinating about it is when you take a look at that, there, there are truths that will come out of that. For example, this happened to me last night. Um, I was looking at, uh, I was trying, I was, I was trying to study something on YouTube for, I don't even remember what it was. And I had my youngest, my seven-year-old who was, uh, he was trying to play games with me. So I'm laying on my bed, looking at this. And then I'm also like kind of quasi paying attention to him. Right. And, and so, and he just wanted time and, and, and I'll be completely honest on my calendar. It was in the period of time that, you know, that big red block right there every single day. That's titled kid time, kids time slash phone down. That that's what that's titled. So I was, I was not honoring my calendar uh, yesterday. I was in that, in the midst of that period. And my son, it was very E7. It was very clear to him through his language, what he said, he's like, dad, like basically he's like, dude, you're paying attention to your phone. You're not paying attention to me. And, and here, here's the point of, of taking an assessment, a time assessment. You can come to the conclusion that where your time is the most important thing for you. And so in that moment, whether I intend it or not, my son knew that he was less important than whatever it was that was on my phone. He knew that inherently. And so you might as well be honest about it, right? You might as well, you might as well label it for exactly what is going on because that's how it's received. If you don't believe me, next time you go to lunch, uh, go to lunch with a friend who's always on their phone and they're always locked in their phone and they can't spend enough. They can't even drop the phone to, to hang out with you. How do you feel? Be honest with yourself, right? You, most likely you're going to feel hurt. You're not going to, we're a bunch of matcha dudes in here. So you're not going to admit it. You're not going to admit that you're hurt, but that's exactly how you feel because you are less of a priority. And most likely what's happening on that phone, what, where this really hits home, it's not that important. Like you're doing something stupid. Like you're watching some other dude with his kids making a TikTok video and posting that you're watching that and and your own kid is potentially sitting there like huh wow i'm not even as important as whatever it is dad's watching and it's inconsequential what you're what what you're watching and so that is something that that when you look at your calendar when you take an assessment of your daily activities when you take an assessment where you spend money just be honest with yourself about it. Just be honest and say, you know what? This is my priority. This is clearly what is most important to me. And it, it will be very telling the more honest you are about that, right? And that drives change. It, I still right now feel regret. I'm not a big re- regretful backwards looking guy. I feel regret for the opportunity I missed, even though it was short and I corrected it, luckily, but for the time that I missed and the message I sent Noah, I'm still regretful about that. And so you're never going to be perfect, but you can be better. You can be better and you can be intentional. And that's a great exercise to figure that out. Go ahead, Stu. Our, our, our kids are probably the best uh, accountability partner that you could possibly have. If they know that there's a time period on your calendar where you're supposed to be present with them and they know that you're supposed to be putting the phone down. And if you're not, they're going to call you out every single time. I love it. Did you, did you tell Noah David yesterday that uh, he just wasn't the priority right now for you in your, in your TikTok yeah, video? Yeah, was? I mean, he's seven. I looked at him straight in his, in his little uh, first grade face. And I was like, look, dude, you should see this YouTube short that just popped up. <laughs> it is so good. And, uh, uh, you know, playing hide and go seek right now in this moment is not, not that important. Not a priority for me. No, That's not, good. That pri- not that important to me. Good. And I mean, he received it well. I mean, he received it well. You know, he, good, it was, it good, was good dad tips on this, yeah. on this uh, yeah. webinar. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, good stuff. Awesome. Be honest. Hey, uh, 2024. So 2024, right around the corner. We, we love, there's a guy named Donald Miller. It's funny. Cause you, I've, I have, uh, seen a, a significant kind of shift in, in, in his, uh, just 
you know, what he puts out as a, as an author, but years ago, I read this book called blue, like jazz transformative book. Awesome. He wrote a, a couple other books, a lot of stuff about dad wounds and, and, uh, things that he was working through, but phenomenal Christian author, but now he does uh, business made simple has written a couple books, story brand, and, and is very focused on business coaching and pretty, pretty phenomenal individual. But he, um, also does podcasts and, and has a ton of stuff, really uh, high quality stuff. He says, uh, what will make 2023 great? And 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 we completely agree with these things because it aligns very well with what we're trying to do, not only in our lives, but but uh, T-Camera at large. And so first, define your role as a husband, father, and friend, right? So define your role as a husband, father, and friend and put action steps to that. You know, Donna Miller calls it your job description. You know, we, in T-Cam, we, we, uh, uh, about last year, I think we developed this roles PDF and we'll send it out to everybody on this call, but it's a roles PDF that, that really helps you dive deep into these roles. And, and it ends most importantly in action items, right? You, you I identify the action items that you're going to do to be better in these roles. And it, it's pretty, if you take it seriously, very powerful uh, exercise and, and one that we love uh, Two, make a bucket list, right? Like, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not a big bucket list guy from the perspective of like, uh, you know, go see the thing, N nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's not, that's not really the way that I like to look at it. What, what I like to look at it is, is a bucket list that you, no kidding, you schedule and, and pick three things, uh, hard, fun, and give so put no kidding in your calendar, three things you're going to do that are hard. Uh, you know, and, and uh, Alex just popped up on my screen. Uh, you want to see something hard, hit him up off offline and ask him about uh, jumping from an airplane into all seven con continents in seven days, landing on the ground, running a marathon and doing whatever else they did, and then getting back in an airplane and, and going to the next continent, doing that in seven days. That that I think was hard. I don't know, Alex, you can shake your head yes or no. It sounds hard to me, um, but uh, uh, beat an army. Uh, so so do something you know hard do something fun. Like guys, like, like fun is, is something that is a huge, uh, I think we, we, we neglect fun to our own peril, right? So Stu and I have, we intentionally schedule every Thursday, something fun, so whether it's snowboarding, mountain biking this week, if you're local, we're going to go, uh, uh, to top golf, but just something fun that you, that, that really combined, you know, with your dudes and also with your family, like be that fun dad. It, it, it's actually, it's actually fun. It's really enjoyable. So get something fun on the on the uh, on your bucket list, and then give. There's there's very few things in this world, if anything, that are as rewarding and character building and, and beautiful as giving. And so you know, get get something on your list, a goal that you want to achieve through giving. However you do that, time, effort, money, whatever that looks like, just get it out there. All right, third, uh, this one I, I love. It's it's different. Create a, a boundaries list. Identify the things you're not going to do this year. Like, do, do like an anti-goal list. I am not going to do these things this year, right? And make a list of the things you are not going to do and commit to that. Because we we love, we, we, we picture it as a pyramid and at the top of the pyramid, it's yes. And everything below that are no's. So be intentional with your no's to get to the most powerful yeses. And so create that list and, and make your, I am not going to do this this year list. All right. And then finally, invite a friend. If you want to 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 help make a change in their life, and you want you you want the, the the power of accountability in your own life to make changes, be each other's accountability partner. Don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid of vulnerability. Don't be afraid of honesty. Get a dude that you trust. Tell that dude, "Hey, man, I trust you. I love you. I'd like to do this journey with you, and just see what happens. To see what happens, right? I wouldn't recommend Stu. Uh, for those of you out there, I don't know. That's just not my recommendation. Not my top recommendation, but find that guy and reach out. And in the process of doing that, just observe the beauty of, of, of the relationship and how somebody responds when you tell them, Hey dude, like you're super important to me. I just want you to know that just that is unique and it's different. And I guarantee you that whoever that individual is, is going to feel they're going to be floating. Right. And we need to do more of that. So go do that. I don't never hear that from you, David. What's that? I don't, I don't never hear that from you. Oh, it's because I, I actually have somebody else and, oh, and they, they they've call? heard that they've heard that, uh, <laughs> dude, I don't want to, I don't oh. want to, I don't want to let anybody know. I don't want to embarrass them. Oh, but Ben, dude, we'll chat later, Ben. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good.
All right. Uh, so this is our final slide here. This is just, you know, for the guys that uh, are new here that don't know much about us. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the dudes on here are, are mastermind members. Um, but, uh, like David said, Hey, we're, we're, we're really on a mission to, uh, create fellowship, uh, to create more connections, uh, in-person connections, uh, are the best way to connect. Um, so we, we just started sending invites out every single week and going and doing fun things. We, we decided Thursdays were our day. And, um, so we, you know, some of you guys are on it. We go do, uh, 14ers, we go hike, we go snowboarding, uh, we play top golf, we have coffee, we do lunch. Um, you know, we try to just find new fun stuff and locations to go and do. Uh, so that's here locally in Colorado. Uh, if, uh, if you're listening to this, it's probably gonna be a podcast later on. If you're listening to this, you're in, if you're in Colorado, um, you can check out our, our meetup page, uh, connect Minnesota 310, or you can just go to our website and there's a big banner at the very top and it says, come join Stu and Dave and hang out with us. Uh, you can click on that and that way you'll get an actual, no kidding, uh, calendar invite from us. If you do that, um, Steven, our, our third business partner, um, he started uh, what's called the Manifesto. Uh, it's a newsletter. He's on episode three. Three came out last week. So episode four will come out or uh, issue number four will come out, I think, next week. It's it's bi-monthly. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, it's just, you know, three to four, uh, you know, items that we're thinking about, talking about, heard, action steps. It's it's like a really quick read, um, but there's some no kidding, like great stuff in there. So if you are interested in joining that, check out uh, the connectman.com backslash newsletter. And then recently what we did uh, is another thing called leveling up. Um, we are almost on episode 300 of our podcast. And what we realize is uh, we have a ton of great guests um, and David and I get a ton of um, great information, advice uh, before recording and after recording. And that just kind of gets held internally by the two of us. Um, and, and there's some like life-changing stuff. And so, Recently, we we're like, hey, we should just record, you know, maybe a question or two of advice from these guests and then, you know, give that out to our listeners. And so we just started doing that. We've been doing that for about three months now. We have some amazing advice from some of our guests. And uh, you can get that if you go to kineticman.com slash level up. Um, it's, it's super cheap. It's $2 a month. Um, and uh, like one piece of advice would, we'll, we'll, you know, be well worth it. Um, like David said, we're actually having Jordan Grummet, Doc G on next week. And I can't wait to hear uh, his, you know, three minutes of advice. So um, check that out if you're interested in it. And that is all I have for a plug. Um, what else, David, you got anything else, anything uh, funny to say? No, man, I, I used up most of my, my uh, stew jokes yeah. earlier, but, but I will say in, in all honesty, we're, Super grateful for you guys giving us your time. Thank you guys for joining this call and and uh, you know interacting with us and and just uh, it's a huge honor uh, when when people give time to to things like this. And so thank you for that. I know that some of you guys had to sacrifice to to be here. So thanks. All right, I will uh, end the recording and we can just stay on for a few extra minutes if you guys have any thoughts, ideas, questions. Uh, but uh, if not, then uh, thanks for showing up and uh, guys have go have an amazing day. Yep.